I'm going to go ahead and get started. So this is the opportunities for PDF on mobile platforms. Um, I'll start. Let's see if I can get this thing to go to the next page. Huh. Oh, there we go. I just have to click it. Uh, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm going to ask a little bit about you as well. So um, I. I, my name is Pat Wibbler. I'm an engineering manager on the Adobe Document Cloud. Uh, I'm working right now on our mobile PDF viewers uh, for Adobe. So uh, I should get that out up front. I'm going to talk a lot today about what, PD, what things in PDF work and don't work on mobile platforms. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you is how many of you actually write PDF viewers? I would guess there are a few of you in, in the room for other, other products. So I have a lot in here about what works on the Adobe Reader. And if you see something that does or doesn't work on your reader that you'd like to chime in, please just shoot your hand up and let me know, because I don't know as much about these other readers as I probably should, because um, I've, I've been pretty much buried in hours for about five years now. Uh, before working on the mobile reader, I worked on our desktop product, um, mostly on the collaboration, scripting, and areas of application security. Um, I'm also, I was also responsible for the install and update uh, in Acrobat 10. So what I get a lot is, oh, you're the guy who's asking me to, to update. Um, but what I like to say is I think I at least played a part in making that better because I think it's better now than it used to be. So hopefully, hopefully I played a, a part in making that better. Um, but if, if not, you can yell at me afterwards. Um, let's see. So when I started working on mobile, in, it was actually late 2010, early 2011. Um, it was just a really small group of us, and um, there was already an Android reader, but we were trying to figure out how to bring that to iOS. Um, and at the time, we were investigating whether we could you know, basically port all of the desktop code over. Um, and five years ago, mobile devices were a lot different than they are now, and so it may be that if we were to start over today, we'd do something differently. Uh, in fact, we probably would do something differently. But instead of porting our desktop code, we started with a very small code base. Um, we call it internally Tetraphilia, uh, which is a, a much smaller PDF rendering library. So if you want to, if you look at our, thank you, if you look at our mobile app and you want to know why it doesn't do something with the desktop app, it's because it's completely different code. Um, they share a lot of concepts, obviously, but it's completely different code. So I imagine others may have had similar similar experiences with with their code bases, whether they could port um, a desktop app or not. Um, but that, that's where we come from. So which, which other readers do we have in here? Or viewers? Yeah. Nitro Pro. Nitro? OK. Zodo? <coughs> Zodo? OK. Foxit. I know I saw some Foxit. PDF Expert. PDF Expert. OK, yeah. so that's Riyadal. I mentioned you guys in this presentation. So um, definitely, definitely chime in. Uh, and tell me, you know, where I'm where I'm missing something about about you guys. In fact, I should probably be taking notes. <laughs> Whoops! Why did it go backwards? Apparently, I don't know how to use the uh, desktop product for presentation mode. Okay, that didn't work either. Sorry. There we go. Do, yeah, it's when I click it, it sometimes goes forward and sometimes goes backwards. Am I? <laughs> you need to go back a slide. Pardon me? No, I think I'm on the right slide now. So we just talked a little bit about which about PDF viewers. Um, I just went into the app stores and searched for PDF viewer, and these were the top five that came up on each of the platforms. Um, some of you may see yours here. Uh, some of you won't. Um, so are there others that are that that were not mentioned that people are using and on different platforms? Does anyone in here use one of the one that's not mentioned here or wasn't mentioned before? Okay, so we've we've captured most of them. Um, that's good. And and the point I wanted to give here is Phil Phil Idens was saying this morning that there's a lot of built-in support on a lot of these platforms. Um, the point I want to make is there's also a lot of choice uh, for for viewers uh, that aren't built-in. Um, so no matter which of these platforms you're on, uh, you can. Readers, users can go download um, any a lot of different choice of of, um, of viewers. So <laughs> now it's going backwards again. Huh. Now 
file forwards. That's good. Maybe I should get going. So why PDF on mobile? I think a lot of this is the same reason that you do PDF on, on a desktop or, or, or anywhere. Um, this is supposed to be a hi-fi system in the upper left, so I think the fidelity is really good. Um, it's something that, that's portable and can be shared. Um, I actually find, in some ways, I use PDF more now that I'm mobile than I used to before. Um, I find before I go on a trip, I'm frantically making, turning things into PDFs and storing PDFs on my local device so that I'll have them with me when I go, things like reservations, um, because I, connectivity is a problem in some places, especially when I travel internationally. Um, the other one is it's, it's still a good archival format. Um, and uh, so that, this, is, this is why I think PF on mobile. Any, anyone here have other, other good opportunities you want to talk about? I'm trying to make this a little bit interactive, at least. And how many PDFs? This is, this is what we estimate that we open on our mobile readers in a month, um, between one and a, one and a half billion. This is based on opt-in analytics data that we have. So we have to estimate it because we don't have actual numbers. Um, it seems like a lot to me, but when you start looking at it in the grand scheme of things, um, I think Phil said this morning there are 18 billion total PDFs. I think that number he actually meant 18 trillion or something, because <laughs> I, I, that seemed, that seemed kind of small, especially when you looked at the next number. Um, uh, that was below it. Uh, and I, I want to talk a little bit about what I think works everywhere. And you guys, please chime in if you see things that you think are, are incorrect or correct here. Because um, what we usually say is it's basically PDF 1.4, which is pretty old, um, but plus some things. Uh, compressed object streams, uh, JPX decode, which is JPEG 2000. I think that came in PDF 1.5. Um, many clients actually support quite a bit more than this, but some, but some uh, this is this is kind of the the thing that is baseline support for for everyone. Uh, minus uh, the things that don't work everywhere: are interactive interactive viewing, like annotations, actions, acro forms, uh, XFA, uh, tag PDF, saving back to encrypted files, as well as anything other than RGB for color space. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Did I miss anything? Are there things you guys think work everywhere in your experience? Good. This is the stuff that I think works nowhere. Um, this is where I mentioned Riattle, which is P PDF expert, right? You guys have some support for XFA. Um, it's, it's, XFA is a very rich model, so it's, it's limited. But um, we actually get a lot of people on our Adobe readers saying, hey, why don't you support um, XFA? Riattle does. Why don't you? It's your, it's your technology. But we just don't. Um, we have some analytics numbers on how many of those documents we see in a day relative to other documents. And it's actually a very, very small number. Um, off the top of my head, I think it's well less than 1% of the documents that are open um, end up being XFA documents. Um, other, th other things don't work. Most of PDF JavaScript doesn't work. I know PDF Expert supports some PDF JavaScript. We support some PDF JavaScript in the context of forms. But if you're looking for things that, um, you know, if you want to play multimedia files using JavaScript or do a lot of the fancy JavaScript things that are in the, in the PDF JavaScript reference, you're just not going to be able to do them almost anywhere on mobile, mobile platforms. As well as, of course, portfolios with Flash navigators. Um, I just threw this one in there because sometimes people ask me about it, not very often. We also have analytics data on this that shows that doesn't happen very often either. Um, so, so one of the things I want to talk a little bit is that most PDF viewers, or a lot of the, the PDF viewers that aren't built into the platform, have basic PDF annotations. In fact, even on iOS, Apple just shipped, shipped some, they call it annotation support, but it's not really annotation support. Um, the problem that we run into on iOS is when you go to mail it, as soon as you see it in your email, you see this thing on the right that doesn't have, uh, that doesn't have the annotation attached. So we get a lot of users complaining about the fact that they can't actually view the, that we've lost their annotation as soon as they start to send it in mail. I'm sure you guys who have, uh, have viewers have the same problem. Um, so you're kind of left with a choice, which is you either flatten it so that it's not editable anywhere else, or you share the original and let it, the user think that you lost their data for them, or you give them a choice, which is something we don't like to do. but. Um, you probably can't read this. This is offering the, the opportunity to flatten or share the original document uh, when, when they share. And I think uh, several other viewers have, have this choice as well. And this way, it would show up in Mail or Safari when the user opened it on another mobile device. And this is actually really unfortunate. Um, 
the the fact that we have to do silly things to the PDF to make it so that it's actually viewable on a uh, on the platform that we're sending it from. But it's it's something we're left with. <laughs> The, the fruit company, as they s said yesterday. Um, something else that works um, in several readers or audio and video, um, uh, in the Adobe Reader, it only works as attachments. Do other readers support uh, multimedia and multimedia annotations? Any of the others here? Um, so you can attach multimedia uh, and, and other things to PDF files, and they'll, they'll work in a lot of these viewers. Um, I have an example here of a small movie. I won't play it because this isn't a mobile device, so it's not a very good demo. The key is you have to be sure that this is on iOS similarly. And now I'm going backwards again. You have to be sure that the audio, the audio and video format that you're sharing uh, is supported on the platform. And so both, both platforms have good documentation on what's supported. Um, this, I was kind of joking with someone the other day, and I said sometimes I, I heard that when they wrote Star Trek, the script writers would put something like, tech, 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 and then they'd send it to the science consultant who would go fill in with something that sounded reasonable. And that's what I felt like when I put this in. This just looks like tech, 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 tech. The key thing is if you want to send an audio or video uh, file on one of these devices, come back and look at this slide later or go look it up on the web. Um, and I bolded this one. Whoops. I bolded MP4. That's one that seems to be supported almost everywhere, although not all audio and video in MP4 can be processed by all the devices you have to get. You have to get it in a codec uh, inside of MP4 that's supported. Um, Did you say that, that mobile VPDF viewers from Adobe support video attachments? Attachments. Not annotations. Not annotations Did yet. Annotations come much earlier in PDF history. Yep. Than video I think so. Um, well, why did you do that? Because uh, the, the attachments came in a very. It's recent it's an accident of history. Um, so several several releases ago, we were really pushing everyone to do portfolios, yeah. and we thought portfolios were going to be the next big thing in PDF. And so someone, when we first started, probably about five years ago, when we first started writing these mobile viewers, said, hey, you need to support portfolios in your mobile viewer. Well, portfolios are an awful lot like attachments. And so we basically just repurposed everything in portfolios. Uh, we, we present a portfolio like a PDF with attachments. And so similarly, so we already had the code basically to do this. And so we support attachments because we support portfolios. And it really probably isn't a far cry to support media annotations uh, or any other of any number of other media embedded media in the PDF, but we just have never gotten to it. Okay. Um, okay. So I'd like to see us do it. In fact, I'd love to see us be able to you know record a, a video and attach it to a PDF from the device. The device is a perfect thing to do that with, but it's just not something we've gotten to. And I know some of the other viewers actually support that as well. Um, and I, I put something on here: why not portfolios? Um, which is kind of appropriate given what I just said. I, what I I never like this experience here, um, where you get the page zero experience that we were talking about this morning. I think this is a really broken experience for a user. So if I were going to send multimedia rather than sending a portfolio, I, pr I would probably send it as a, uh, an attachment, because even though it works, because um, then you can provide a full document um, that, that can even explain, perhaps, why the user doesn't see what they expect to see. Um, So a lot about forms here. This is kind of tech, 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 too. But this is something we've spent quite a bit of time on, partially because it's one of the things that really differentiates our viewer from what's built into the platforms, and partially because we get a lot of users you know, asking to do this. this I know, I know Riatl also has great support for forms as well. Um, so this is what we support. I wanted to be as explicit as possible, so I asked the guy who wrote it to list all of the things. Um, most field types, text, list view, drop down list, button, radio, checkbox. Uh, the only ones that are not supported by us are digital signature and barcode. Um, I believe that some of the other viewers do support barcode and do support digital signa signature in some form. Um, yeah? Why are images so hard for forms? if there was a place for your picture or a logo, to put it in a hole in the form and then process that form. Because I've never seen it on a list of those things. You know, it's funny because um, it, I, I don't even, do you, does anyone know if our Acroforms format supports images in a PDF form? Like, can you have an image upload? It seems like you should. Um, but I, I didn't I see it when I was talking about it. You JavaScript inside the form to kind of do it, uh -huh. but you can't do much with it, right? And it just seems like 
it would be an opportunity to, to, to do that. To, to put an image in a hole on a form for a variety of reasons. Like just compose a business card, for example. I mean, you could have a 1.5 billion viewers for business cards. Well, and as a, as a portable format, if you, as, even if you did something simple like you wanted to ask someone to take a picture of their car that they just had a, an accident with and attach it to a document, um, a form being able to embed it in a form field might be something that's interesting. I mean, you could do it with PDF attachments as well. Yeah. You can also do it with an XFA form. Yeah, it was it was implemented in XFA. So that's probably why it's not an ACRA form. form. There, but yeah, I don't I don't I don't think it's in. It's an XFA form. I don't think it was. But you can use JavaScript to do it, like you said. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you can. But then I don't think it's in, it, then I don't think it gets exported to the XFDF when you want to submit it. Which it's is, just it's yeah, just clearly back best. I mean, you can get it in the hole, yeah, and maybe even put some JavaScript around it to resize it, and, yeah, you know that type of thing. But, that's it, yeah. but after that, it's it. it's really complicated, and it seems like a great you know, the you know, insurance agency. Yeah, yeah, it shouldn't be that hard. Um, yeah, but just, what, yeah, just kind of curious as to it's basically connecting the camera to the uh, to some API in the in the document, and it's not that hard. Yeah, I mean, for, I mean, you'd probably have to go to the PDF spec level to get that in there. Right. I don't know yeah. if you yeah. have to, but I mean, go to the committee and suggest that. I mean, I'm sure like well, as, an, idea. as an attachment, it's easy, but telling, giving the user an easy way to say you need to attach it, like, is not, it would be nice. Like, just say, have a button that you could press, so, yeah. like I can give you a PDF with a Browse, button. Browse, enter, enter picture here, and then yeah. puts it right in the form. That's a good idea. And the form's complete. And I think it would have to be supported at the spec level. Yeah, it has to be at the spec level. At the spec level. Yeah, it has to be there first, and then you can get in there. Example. Um, some submit actions are supported on our, our viewers, not not via JavaScript, though. I have to put that as an exclamation point, because I get a lot of people who email me saying, hey, you said that uh, if I do a mail to submit, it'll work. And they send it to me, and it's a JavaScript submit, not a submit action. Um, so I wanted to get that little detail in here. Um, I said PDF Expert supports more submit actions. I didn't know if, if anyone here knew which ones were supported. Um, and then the events that we support are you can respond to keystroke, uh, validate, calculate, format, mouse down, mouse up, which is obviously touch down, touch up, uh, on focus, on blur, and document open. This is actually quite a bit of, um, of qu quite a few events that you can, um, that you can respond to. Uh, so even with limited JavaScript support, there's probably quite a bit that you can do. Uh, we've seen quite quite a few JavaScript acro forms from, that work on mobile pretty well. Um, it's not the full model, but it's it's quite a bit of the model. Uh, and then as well as some of the formatting, I won't go through tech 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 tech. Uh, these slides will be available afterwards, right? I just okay good. I won't I won't bore you by reading them. Um, and then uh, field picker notation, some simple field notation, and custom calculation scripts. So you can actually add your own calculation scripts as well. Any questions on these? I'm sure, curious, so with regards to the actual document object model, the JavaScript object model, is, do you have a slide on that and what it supports there? Like, you can support the fields and the annotations and all that sort of stuff? That's actually covered in the documentation that I point to here. This stuff okay. isn't covered as well, so I wanted to be sure I listed out. Okay. It's not actually very much. It's like field, um, the fields array, um, and it's not very much. Like, there's no annotation support at all in the JavaScript ob object model. It's very, very small, at least on ours. Um, I think, I, well, on, on our mobile viewer, there are other mobile viewers that have, have richer, um, richer JavaScript support. Uh, and some of the validation that's supported as well. So jumping to color, I mentioned this earlier. Um, if, you can't really see it very well on the, on the screen, but um, my best advice is if you want a PDF on mobile, use RGB uh, because most don't support color profiles at all. Um, uh, the Adobe viewers have limited CMYK support. Uh, it's, not, it's not a profile. What we do is we have a table embedded in the, P in a, in the viewer that we just use to go look up which colors we should display for, for um, wh which colors we should d display when we see CMYK. And it, this, this actually doesn't, doesn't do a very good job. Actually, you can kind of see it 
over here on the edge, especially in these cyans. But a, a PDF that's in CMYK looks really awful on most mobile viewers. Um, I, I did look at it's, it's anything in anything using Quartz, which is the uh, which is the Apple PDF stuff. It will if it's CMYK, it'll just look awful. So just make it RGB, um, and it'll work almost everywhere. The reason for this is you know we actually have code that would support the full PDF color profiling model in the viewer, but when we turn it on, it's really, really slow. Um, so we just decided to implement RGB, CMYK, uh, and then nothing else. We're, out, we're investigating whether we can use the GPU to do this. Uh, we think we can, so I think we'll be able to, uh, to hopefully in the future have a re reasonable support for color profiles on the device as well. So question, the implication of that mean if a printer's PDF is tried to be displayed here? It's it's not going to look right. Like if they've done if they've done full color profiling, it's not going to look good. It's, it, but that means it's going to look good if you're a Creative Pro, or it means it's going like to not be viewable. I, I should have found it'll be viewable. It just looks like the cyan's get it looks like a Van Gogh painting. You know, that like, yeah, yeah. It, like the colors. It, some sometimes it's not that bad, but it can look really. But so just, I'm I'm picky about this stuff, so it looks really bad to me. But I've seen a lot of things like, you know, the the cyan's and the blacks yeah. kind of end up bleeding together, and it looks like. Mush. So you get your, your built-in Instagram filter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Maybe worse. So your your lookup table. Are you just taking the lookup table that would be pretty much in the profile, or are you um, using a, a simplified sort of matrix version of that? I think it's a, it's just a, a matrix. Like it's just a simple. If, if you find me afterwards, I could probably go find the code for you and, and show you, and we could look at it. But it's I would be interested yeah, in it's just a simple it's a simple lookup. I don't think it's anything proprietary. I mean, it's it's a it's it's a map effectively of 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 indexes to go look up and convert the color to, and it actually even slows it down a little bit. But um, I don't have, have you guys found that it can be slow to to yeah, do this we, kind of we color used conversion. The for a while to uh, install the color profile, we switched to color profiles. It, it does slow it down a bit. Um, I even tried out some kind of like that was the fastest. That may be what we're doing. I'll have to go look. I'll, I'll, we go, we'll go see if we can find it afterwards. Um, uh, and if not, you can email me and I'll, I'll get you a, an answer. Um, and we, we, like I said, we are investigating. There's some code inside of Adobe because of all the creative stuff that really cares about this that uses the GPU to do this. And so we're hoping that we can get our full, full color model in, in GPU. So this is, again, tech, 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 tech. But um, we, we recently changed all our iOS implementation to, not recently, in the last few years, to use the GPU. Um, I, I, I listed these things that we see that we fall back to CPU on. Um, these are part of the PDF, Im Im the, PDF um, the, the PDF model that we are probably going to be slower on. If there are small bits of them, then it's not going to matter that much. But like if you take a heavy artwork file from InDesign, it will generate probably every one of these things and choke the viewer a little bit. Um, eventually, I'd like to see us implement all of these in GPU um, and not have to fall back to CPU. Um, but that's that's where we are today. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about Reflow. Um, how many of the viewers in here implement Reflow in some form or another? So that's Foxit, right? And so this is a feature we hear about from time to time. We've had it on Android for a long time. And when we first went to implement it on iOS, our, we, we went, we were, we were gonna, when we first implemented the, the tablet viewers, which was Android and iOS, um, we actually pulled it out because we didn't think it was very, the reflow we had was very good. Um, we weren't very happy with it. It failed in a lot of cases, and we just didn't like it. So we took it away, and a lot of Android users got really, really mad at us. So we put even the bad reflow back on Android, and we've never shipped it on iOS because we weren't happy with it. Um, we're, we've worked on improving it on Android over the last probably six months quite a bit and made some significant improvements, and it will come to iOS very soon. Um, but it was just funny to me that we have a feature that doesn't seem to show up very often in our analytics that we aren't very happy with, but a lot of users really relied on it. And I think that says something about you know, the opportunity on the device. Yeah, PDF is great because it's final format, but it'd be better if it were reflowable um, more consistently. And it's an important thing to invest in, at least for a number of users who do reading. Um, the, 
you know, most of the work we, you know, it'd be better if it, if we could if the PDFs were all tagged, uh, like we, we talked about yesterday, because it's a lot easier to do reflow if, if the content has sem semantic instructions in it. But if it doesn't, you have to use heuristics uh, and a simple layout model. And the simple layout model is just fall back and don't reflow if we don't think we can do it. Um, some of the I wish I, could, I wish I had a, could demo it, but some of the usability improvements we've had recently are pinch and zoom, uh, some improvements around charts and graphs because we used to just scatter the pieces all over the page when we refloat it, um, and some of the future improvements. I said iOS is coming very soon. I actually have a screenshot in it, of it in here. I hope uh, if the latest presentation is up here, um, and we'd like to use reflow and user accessibility, which is coming up next, to nudge producers toward creating better, more tag PDF, which was something we talked a little bit about yesterday. Um, and here's an example of reflow, and you can kind of see this up here on the screen gives you probably a good semblance of what your phone looks like about this level. Um, you can see why it might be important if you wanted to actually read this document. Um, as well, you can pinch zoom on this one on the right and, um, and actually make the text bigger so you, you really could actually read this document on a phone. And this is a sneak preview of what it will look like on iOS. Uh, I got this screenshot just this morning from someone. The first time I had actually seen it running on iOS was this morning, so you guys are only a few hours behind that. So hopefully we'll get that out in the next couple months. So accessibility. Um, this is an area we, we right now fall pretty short in our, in our Adobe PDF viewer. Um, like Reflow, the best accessibility will come from tagged PDF, uh, but not all PDFs are tagged. I, I, I forgot to say on the last slide, we have, our, our estimates are somewhere around 10 to 15 percent of PDFs are fully tagged. Uh, so that's just a very small number. The good news is that for accessibility, people who really care about making a document accessible have incentive to make it, to tag it. And so that's why we're focusing a lot of our energy on tag PDF for accessibility. Uh, we have an ongoing investment on structure inference um, or automatic tagging, uh, but you know, for, for untagged PDFs. But, we think the future is really around tag PDFs for accessibility. Um, yeah. So the tools, must, must tools, must not necessarily convert non tag to tag. Is there any power tools that, you know, that, that uh, would help take an untagged PDF and an untagged PDF? Because it basically has to do what we're talking here, which yeah. is do the structure inference. The structure inference. And I, I, think, I think Acrobat Pro will help with that, but I don't. You know, it's at best human. it's a guess, right? It's still human. Right? Yeah, I think what what you would like is to be able to point and say this is this is this kind of content, this is that kind of content. Um, I mean, Acrobat really definitely lets you do it. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll try to do it intelligently and then you can adjust and it. Some heuristics, mm -hmm. but then yeah, I think you I think you can actually go modify. Maybe someone correct me if I'm wrong. Well, you can go modify yeah. the tagging. Uh, you know, you can script that about to, to get some rules going and stuff like that. But, I, is, I that think, is it Acrobat this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in Acrobat, you can do it. I don't know if you can script it, though. Let's say, you know, um, Thanks. Does anyone else know of any automated tools for doing this? Because I, I would imagine uh, there was a question yesterday about having millions of batches of files that someone wanted to go. Is that your question? Yeah, it seems like yeah. a great opportunity. There's yeah. all this untagged stuff. Yep. That, yeah. So the, uh, the Actuate guys have uh, uh, open text now, sorry, um, have, a, have a suite of tools for this. Um, the current accessibility on, on mobile clients is pretty limited. Um, our use, user experience is navigable, but you get to the document content and your access to the content is pretty limited. And that's really unfortunate. Like, it's kind of pointless to be able to navigate the user experience if you can't actually get at the content of the document. This is an area we're really, really working on because uh, we think it's important, especially on these mobile devices, which are such a part of people's lives now. They need to be able to have this assistive technology work for them wherever they go. And I think this is one of the big opportunities for PDF, uh, is to be able to be a, a portable a portable technology that enables assistance. Um, and one of the things we were talking, I was talking to a couple people when I was making this slide asking whether we thought the mobile devices could actually support the full PDF UA model. And the thinking is pretty close to it. Um, at least iOS has a rich model for content navigation uh, and for content, and so we think we'll be able to do most of the PDF UA model eventually uh, using the semantic gestures exposed by the operating system. 
a few other people. This, this, go ahead. On accessibility, I know iOS has something where it will read things out uh -huh. for blind users. Is that going to be hooked up with? Like, yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, and I think it, even, it is hooked up in a limited way now. Yeah. I, I sometimes have trouble thinking about what we've actually shipped and what we're about to ship. So. It's, well, it's something I know we're actively working on improving it. I don't know for sure whether we've actually shipped it or not. And I, I imagine a, a number of the other viewers have, have shipped it already. So um, this this slide was an add-on at the very end because uh, it, I, I attended Leonard's talk on PDF 101. I and he started listing some of the features of PDF, and I realized I should have talked about a couple of these um, just briefly. Optional content uh, will display the. We'll display the initial state. Uh, support for this varies for a bunch of viewers. I don't know how important it is. Um, we definitely don't have anything dynamic that you can turn on and off various layers in the PDF. Like if you get a map that has layers, um, we, don't, we don't support the ability to turn it on and off. But we do support the initial state. Most viewers will just default to show everything. So if you open a PDF and it's got you know, a bunch of stuff that doesn't look like it should be there, that's probably because it has optional content in it. And it's the viewer has chosen to show everything instead of just the initial state or subset of things. Um, destinations, we support URLs and internal links through bookmarks. Um, some viewers support it, uh, support bookmarks, notably not the Apple uh, viewer. Um, my hope is that this will improve over time. Apple does a pretty good job when their users encounter things that don't work of actually fixing them eventually. And if you if you followed their PDF viewing over the years, they've actually done quite a bit. Like when I first started working on this, they didn't support JPEG 2000 at all. So you'd open a PDF and it'd be missing images. Um, they they improved the, their performance is very good. So I don't want to just badmouth them because I actually I think it's better for all of us if if they come along. Um, but we'll see. So maybe we can put some pressure on them. <laughs> there, there have been some conversations about that. Or I I know we've had conversations about that in you know in the last in some of the sessions. So. Hopefully that actually manages to happen. Yeah. When you say destination, do you name destination? I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think so. As I think if you have a bookmark, you can go, you know, have a name destination and and tap on it, and we'll go there. But I can find out for you. And DRM and security, I also put support various here. We obviously support LCRM-based security for lifecycle rights management. Um, because it was a part of our business to do that several years ago. Uh, and we support reading uh, encryption and security, but we don't support writing back to it. And that's it. So one of the things I didn't mention here were cloud and uh, use cases so much. And that might be something that we should be talking about. Do, do you, what, what kind of opportunities do you guys see? That's one of the things I wanted to ask. And you're free to get up and walk out rather than participate. <laughs> and it was hot in here. I know it's hard, but it'd be nice to see a class five. Yes, I completely agree. Um, at, at least within the same viewer. On Apple, it's fairly hard to go outside, but I think at least within the same same viewer. There is a guy from the Air Force who contacted me saying that the Air Force is standardizing on um, using. PDF documents for all their flight manuals that so their pilots are going to take iPads with them. And they mandate some very complicated folder structure with links in between the folder structure. And so they need a way to do exactly what you're talking about, which is be able to link from one PDF to the other inside of the document structure. And so that's something um, I'd like to see us support too, but I don't, I don't believe any other people do that. Yeah. To go to, go to because there is no file system, but if, if, they, if all the PDFs are there, then you know at least relatively we ought to be able to do something. But that's that's kind of a broken experience too. You know, you, know, you tap on something and you get a sorry, you don't have this PDF. What do I do? We don't like to present you messages to users that they can't actually do anything about. So, but it's also a very good use case for this particular um, uh, for the Air Force. Any other thoughts? Yeah, yeah, sure, no, go ahead. Um, in the beginning, you mentioned that when you started working on 2011, obviously the device was a limited at the time, so you started with a subset of the library, or a much smaller library. Um, as, you, as you grew, um, was the decision based on use cases you were seeing, or that the technology of the devices got better, or was it a combination of both that drove you to add more and more to the library? 
Well, it was, it was, a, lot of it, a lot of it was just pragmatic. You know, we already had this existing global leader, so rather than pitch it and go start over with another one, which is a multi-year effort probably to get back to where we are, we just continue to add on. And it's, it's a use case. Like, in some ways I feel funny because I'm standing here at a PDF conference telling you that we don't implement the full PDF spec or anywhere close to it, and we're probably not going to over in, in the very near future, right? And there's been a lot of conversations I've heard in, in some of these discussions about that crappy Apple viewer, and we're in some ways not, we're, you know, we're in some ways on, on the same, on par with them. So, um, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting, I, I would love to see us get to be able to use the full viewer at some point. Um, we actually did that on the Metro platform. Um, but even then, you know, it's a huge code base. Like, is it appropriate to have 300 megabytes of code, which may be about what it is, and you know, a library that takes 50 megabytes of memory just to initialize? Is it appropriate to have that on a mobile device? Even still, I'm not sure. It's appropriate to have that on a desktop device. Some people would ask too. So, I'm not. I'm not saying the readers would. I'm sorry. Um, it, it's not. It, 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 it's. It's. It, it was built, built for a specific purpose, purpose and this one's built for a specific purpose. purpose. And for, for the most part, the things that we hear people ask for are not the big things that you would need the big reader for. And in, in a lot of ways, the, the little reader is kind of nice. Um, but, but so, so I'll, ask, I'll answer that question another way. We do keep a lot of analytics about what features we see, we see in documents that we don't actually support yet. yet. And, and so, so we try and, you know, someone says to us, we should support this thing. thing. So we go and add analytics to the reader and we get a count of how many of those things we saw this month, and then we'll decide whether to implement it. So we're trying to drive our decisions based on that. Um, so, and it's, it's, it means we're not just going out and arbitrarily choosing pieces of the PDF spec to implement, we're choosing things that we think people are seeing, at least on the mobile readers. Since you're bringing up with the 2.0 stack, which people said, we noticed across the case, which is tough, is that an opportunity? Is that giving you an opportunity to get first step out of that board? <laughs> you, you mean, mean in, in the, the desktop, desktop reader? Well, either one, right? Because they're both right? You know, I, I think the, the, the mobile reader is pretty lean. lean. I think I, I would, would yeah, yeah, I mean. I realize it's not exactly possible. It's, it's about, about no, no, it's, it's a good, it, it, well, it's, it's an, an opportunity, opportunity, right? Is, it a, is PDF 2.0 an opportunity to rethink things? And I, I, I like, like to look at things like that. It's always an opportunity. So we just, you know, I think it probably is an opportunity, but I don't know specifically what it what it will be. So just for reference, the, the mobile reader is about 15 megabytes, um, so it's pretty small. And that includes, you know, all of the at 3x, at 2x, at 1x images that Apple requires. Um, so, you know, all of our images are about three times the size they need to be. And it may also include x86 and 64-bit, so it may be double the binary size it needs to be. So it's not, it's not that big. But, but yeah, if, if there are things in the spec that, that are cleaned up and need to be removed, that's, that's certainly, certainly something we'll, we'll look at. Uh, that's for 2.0, I don't know, know when, when, when... It's funny, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm actually not that close to the desktop team anymore. <laughs> so are there plans, at least? I'm, I'm still close to them, but I'm not close to their plans, so I can't... Yeah, PDF 2.0. Do you guys know? And, and it's like used to run a desktop team. What? Has 2.0 actually been ratified then? No. no. Yeah, I, I, don't, I wouldn't expect that uh, any time before sometime next year at the earliest. Yeah. Matthew, Matthew Hardy would have a good answer for you. You, you know, know he's he's a, he gave a couple talks yesterday. Any yeah. other questions? Thanks. Thanks.